Every time I look at a Windows Server failover cluster, I kind of think of a traffic light, or I usually call this a stoplight. And a traffic light has three different phases. The stop phase, the waiting phase, and then the starting phase. Although in some countries, the waiting phase might mean go faster, but that's beside the point. You look at the different phases of the traffic light and correlate them to what's happening within a Windows Server failover cluster. First phase is stopping of the service. If the service is temporarily stopped for whatever reason, whether it's intentional, maybe you are moving the service from the active server to one of the standby because you're performing maintenance or accidental where the server just died or one of the hardware just failed, the cluster will stop the service on that particular server. After stopping the service, the cluster has to wait. But what does it wait on? The cluster waits for all of the dependencies to be available before it can bring the service online and start it back up. All of these different phases impact how Windows Server failover clustering provides high availability for a specific workload. So every time you deal with a Windows Server failover cluster, I want you to think of the traffic light and how it behaves. I've referenced a two node cluster, the traditional two node Windows Server failover cluster in a previous lesson. But now let's dive deep into the whole stopping, waiting and starting of the service in the context of SQL Server. As early as this lesson, I wanted to introduce a new entity, Active Directory and DNS. And you might be thinking, well, what does that have to do with my SQL Server and high availability? Whether you like it or not, and this is something that I tell most SQL Server professionals, particularly DBAs, your job is now dependent on things that you are not even aware you're dependent upon. And so understanding that Active Directory and DNS play an important role in a Windows Server failover cluster makes you aware of the things that you need to consider. We'll talk about those dependencies in a future lesson, but at this point, it's important for us to understand Active Directory and DNS play an important role in keeping your SQL Server failover clustered instances and availability groups up and running. Let's simulate the stop, wait, and start phases of the traffic light as we look at the failover cluster. Let's say your SQL Server workload is running on an active server, the one on the left. And let's say failure occurred. The service gets stopped. The cluster waits. And once all of the dependencies are available, it starts the service on the standby server, the one on the right. If you noticed, the application got disconnected when the service was stopped. Cluster has to wait until all of the dependencies for the SQL Server workload, or in this case, the SQL Server service, before it can bring it back online on the standby server, which is now acting as the active server. We've highlighted how the stop, wait, and start processes or phases occur in a Windows Server failover cluster. Once the service is back online or is started on one of the standby servers, the application can reconnect back to the service. 